Today we got the experts with us on Tractor Time with Tim. Got Ken from Ken's Bolt-On Hooks here. I was hoping maybe you could show <laughs> us some of the more minute features on this tractor as we go through the day. Some of the differences that you see that, you know, that I might not see. And, maybe on some of the other brands and some of the other tracks, but I'm just thrilled to have your uh, expertise with us today. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Tim. It's a pleasure so. to be here. This is my first farm show, my first big farm show anyway, yeah, and to uh, come to one of this scale is just, um, it's mind-boggling right now. <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed by everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have them all right here side by side. We have the deer here within yeah. 30 feet. We have the Kubota boots, right. so. LS, and names we never even heard of before. <laughs> That's already been discussed on the forum, I see. <laughs> I think he's just about bought one of these 2025Rs already. I'm not giving up my 3720, sorry. Well, you have room for an extra tractor, don't you? <laughs> not right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time you've seen one? Yes. Well, the step is unique. I wish we could come up with something like that for the 1 Series. I get a lot of questions about that. Yeah, and I, um, I didn't look over there to see if it has the same mounting, to see if the step would maybe work, especially um, if you didn't have the mower. Maybe if you didn't yeah. have the mower deck, well, that's that, the that issue might still is work. I haven't seen any of all the homemade designs that I've seen. I haven't seen one that I was comfortable with to produce and one that's compatible with the mower deck. So, and since just about every one series owner has a mower deck. Well, Deer's certainly going to keep you in business. I noticed that even <laughs> after the redesign, they still haven't put the step on. And uh, ours should fit there, right? It will fit, yeah. Yeah, ours should fit there. That is definitely a substantial spring. We're getting a lot of questions about these too. So I believe we're seeing several folks that are uh, actually making bars and putting a single hook in the middle. What do yes. you think of that, Kenny? Um, I think it's not enough support to properly hold a hook. You'd still need to drill uh, possibly two or four more holes. And even then, even with that much width, yeah, I, I'm nervous. I, on my own loader, I, I had some trouble with this. Yeah. Uh, I bent it down a little bit. It's not very strong. It's definitely the weakest part of the bucket. It's, so, not, it's not reinforced like it is right here. Where would you put the hooks then? So, um, Ken, that's a bolt-on hook if I've ever seen one. That is, Tim. That's um, one of our newer uh, bolt-on hooks. We've just refined the welding process to make, make them even smoother. We got a new plater, so we're trying to get more consistent plating. We also have our clevis mount with us um, today. Same thing. We're refining our welding process. Well, that looks beautiful. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I can weld almost um, that good. I'm sure you can. Um, <laughs> I was going to hire you, but I, I thought you were too busy with the video. So, I think I better stay um, with the video. So what we're aiming for is um, is more consistency in the product. So um, as we're as we're growing, we're we're trying to get uh, better and. And, so let's uh, see one fit right on here. This is where you put them, right? Yeah, we generally recommend they go uh, right in front of um, where the loader attaches to the uh, to the frame. So you put it right there, about centered on that flat part. And then optionally, you can get a uh, backing plate for underneath or one of the clevis mounts underneath to hang a, a screw pin shackle if you use straps and slings. Now you say you don't really need that for a one series, but I feel a lot more comfortable with it. I, you know, my recommendation would be to go ahead and get this clevis mount. Well, yeah, most people do just because they feel better about having the backing plate, but the testing we've done and we show on the website um, proves that the, the washers we provide for underneath, you know, the, the one series tractor just can't hurt the bucket or, or rip you know, I, I used to get comments, you know, if you don't have a backing plate, you'll rip the hook through the bucket. Well, that's, it's just impossible. You can see in the stress testing videos, we're pulling 19,000 pounds through 10 gauge plate, which this is. Wow. And, and what happens is the chains break or the bolts break. Well, you know, I mean, I just like the coating and all on here. I mean, these are classy. Yeah. If I'm going to yeah. spend this kind of money on a tractor, right. I really want it right. to, I mean, and these really shine. And as we talk about too, that's a very common question we covered on our FAQ page about um, painting. You know, do you provide green hooks or whatever? No, the zinc chromate finish is more durable than any powder coating we could offer. The question I ask is even on the website is what other hardware on the tractor is painted? And the answer is none. All the bolts and, and, and fittings and hardware is all zinc coated. So that's my recommendation is to put them on there like jewelry and not paint them. <laughs> now this is a 3025E that we're looking at here, yes. but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Um, we we don't recommend the bolt-on products for any of the heavy-duty double wall buckets. 
Um, this one is a single wall that's only 10 gauge, uh, 10 gauge thick there. Uh, it's about an eighth inch or so. The problem with the double wall buckets that some of the 3 Series come with, the optional heavy duty buckets, you can just feel there, they're about an inch apart to two surfaces and it'll have an optional bolt-on cutting edge, you know, it'll have the holes in it. The problem with those buckets and the bolt-on products are when you drill the holes and go to tighten the bolts, you can compress the two walls together. So you can never get the hook properly tight. And some guys have got around that um, by making various spacers and a few other uh, things. We covered that on the website, but our official stance is not to recommend the bolt-on hooks. Um, for the double wall buckets at this time. Most are, deer buckets though are single wall. Yeah, so we are we are working well except for the heavy duty buckets. On a lot of the three and four series, the dealer orders them with the heavy duty bucket. And okay. those are double wall on top. Um, we are working on an idea to deal with that space that, that we, uh, we still have a long way to go before we're ready to introduce that, but. Looks good, Ken. Thank you, Tim. Right yeah. Here. Yeah, and I really wanted to incorporate that into the our backhoe step. But um, there's a serious problem, Christy. The problem is that this cylinder is still strong enough to break this. Yeah. Or bend it up. Yeah, I have a picture at home of somebody that had one of these. What happened was it was locked up and the, the guy was not familiar with the operating machine and he lowered the stabilizer down and the cylinder literally bent this arm made it like that. It literally overpowered this whole arm and bent it because it was still locked up. So I don't know if they've changed that problem and that was a concern when I looked into making them for our step. We should never have the machine be able to hurt itself like that and I didn't want to contribute to that with something that I offered. It so. is a need though. If we could if we could have a solution somehow because the, the steps leak down when you've got it in storage position and uh, we end up having to strap them together. Right. Um, so it's, well, we need some answer, Ken. Come on, come on. Hey, Kenny, we see these things here, these little O-rings that are just hanging down here. What's, what's the point of that? So these little O-rings that a lot of people see on the cylinders and ask about on the forums, what they are is when the cylinders are painted, you don't want paint on the wiper seal. And that's the wiper seal is the seal that cleans the rod from dirt and debris when the cylinder closes or, or retracts. So these little O-rings are up in there, and that's why they're orange, because they're painted, and they keep that paint off of there. So what happens is, they raise the cylinder up, they end up at the end of the cylinder. And the dealers are, are supposed to cut them off when they PDI the machines. Um, they don't, a lot of them probably don't even know what they're for, so they leave them on. And then somebody gets on the tractor for them and says, hey, is my cylinder broken? I got an O-ring that popped out of my cylinder. And no, it's just it should have been taken off. It's just a, just to protect that little wiper seal. Um, and that's all it is, real simple. If you got it on your machine, on your loader, um, John Deere does the same thing. They're all over those two. Just cut it off. It's trash. It's not meant to be there anymore. Well, thanks. That's a big help. <laughs> Kenny, this is one of my favorite features of the BX series right here. And I don't know if we can see it very easily, but this single point connector right in here really makes hooking up the loader a lot easier. So are you going to make me one of these for my deer? Um, probably not, Tim. The problem with these single points, what? the problem with these single points is they cost real, real. In reality, they cost about five to six hundred dollars just for the the male and the female pieces of that. To further complicate that, the price issue is a lot of guys are adding third functions to their loaders, whether it be a diverter or from their rear remotes to operate the grapples that are so popular. Um, and this only does four functions, so you still end up with two other hose connections that aren't included in that, um, in, in that attachment. So unless you're using a diverter specifically that mounts on the loader, um, then having the single point is really negated by the fact that you still have two more quick couplers to, uh, to connect. And so while it's a good feature, it's not, um, it's not the end-all be-all, and, and it, does, it, it does have its own issues besides cost. Okay, I suppose today if I want one, really the best choice for me if I want to stay green, I'm going to have to go with the 2038R. That's correct. It's a worthwhile, R. yeah, it's worthwhile option. Um, the deer one is a square block, and I don't know if the deer um, provides for the two extra outlets in there. I don't believe it does. Uh, the company that makes these faster, I believe, um, they do have one with six ports in it. 
um, but I don't believe that the deer ha you know offers that as an option. So if you're considering a BX, this is one feature that the Deer 1025R does not offer, or at least does not offer cost competitively. And this is standard on any of the BX80 series tractors. Yes. It's an incredible feature. What is, is this the break? Talk about. No break over there? Ugh. No break at all over no, there? nothing on this side. Seriously? See the, see the cylinder here, Christy? Yeah. The three-point hitch here is actually controlled by an external cylinder. I've never seen that on one of these little tractors. Usually it's all internal. The whole rock shaft control is internal. But this one cylinder controls it, and then it goes through this shaft to the other side. Kind of leaves a lot of exposed hoses down here in a, I don't know, a little bit of a scary place to me. It could be, especially if this was forced up. But you can't, that's interesting. You can't force it up. Um, but yeah, if these weren't spread out wide enough, it looks like that could contact that elbow and break that off. The PTO shield doesn't lift up. I notice it's got the red fluid in it too, just like the, the John Deere's do from Yanmar. It's interesting. It's quite a different design than the uh, One Series, even though, even though they had a lot of influence on the One Series. Take an example here. This is an example of just a, a cheaper seat approach. You don't have near the uh, suspension that you have in the deer. The front seat is fixed. The only suspension you have is in the rear here. And this is the way the other two series was made, the earlier two series tractors, right? right. Oh, yeah. Because they were Yanmar tractors. How do you doing, Kenny? Trying to break it? Yes, I am. How are you? Isn't that what they're here for? <laughs> yes, you're just like a kid. <laughs> This little latch holds the parking brake lever up. Oh, okay. That's kind of, this is the lock for the joystick. Okay. Now this is a Yanmar branded disc mower. I think it's an incredible design for a compact tractor. This is 51 inch cutting width, so a little over four feet. It, uh, I've got the weight here, it weighs 476 pounds. So even a subcompact tractor could pick this up. In design, it's just like a sickle bar mower, where you pick this up, and that's going to allow this bar to, to pick up. It's also going to allow it, when you're cutting, to, to flex downward, so that it can cut below uh, grade if it needs to on an angle. This is part of a hay package that Yanmar has for cutting and raking and baling hay. You can drive really fast with these disc mowers. They're a really good approach to uh, cutting hay much better than the older sickle bar bars. Now this stuff is not cheap, I promise you that, but it's worth having a look at. Now this is for your, when your yard gets a little too heavy, yeah, Kenny. Right. Quite a lot going on in there. We need this for when I don't mow for several weeks. Absolutely, maybe we could just use that in the front yard, make a little extra I'm money. sure the neighbors won't mind. Yeah, maybe we could market this as a uh, way to make some money off of your uh, Laziness and taking look, it's three point mount. I'm surprised at that. It's three point mount. TO drives this gear, which drives this little hydraulic pump. It's like a wiper motor type setup, some kind of gear motor. So that's the bail door. <laughs> Very cute. So they also have a rake to go with these. They don't have the rake sitting here this year. We're actually seeing it on a video camera. But I, mean, I think it was something like $10,000 for all three of them. Now you can check it out on their website. Again, it's by Yanmar. Ah, this is me. Very safe, huh? Sand under the loader? Yeah. Well, sometimes if you have to work on the machine and the loader's up, or you can't take the loader off for some reason, there's a way you can safely do that. So what they've done for the show to keep the loader raised is to take a piece of angle iron and strap across the cylinder with just simple cable ties. So now the weight of the loader is actually resting on the face of the cylinder here and the bottom of the, uh, where the cylinder mounts. And that takes all the weight. That way if somebody moves the joystick, um, the loader can't come down. So a lot of large industrial machines will have that. Um, say like a big John Deere backhoe or a Case New Holland backhoe. You'll see a big, uh, usually it's yellow or orange uh, arm attached there. 
and they do that so they have to do maintenance they put the loader up and they flip that arm down it's built into the machine um, but in this case they don't have that so they just took a piece of angle iron um, and did that as a safety measure to protect the passers-by and anybody uh, but it's something you could do if you needed to to work under your loader safely for a few minutes without having to take the loader off. Do you have to do both sides? And just you don't have to do both sides, no, because the, the loader frame is rigid enough that the, um, just the one side is rigid enough to hold up the machine. You can see Tim can kind of pull on that on the other side a little bit, and it's, uh, it's rock so solid. See, it's I wasn't being unsafe. <laughs> right. Coyote country. I like the cab. And it's quiet. I shut the door. Can you hear me? Yelling at you? No, can't hear you. The cab's got really good visibility and it's really quiet. I'm inspecting the buckets to see if the hooks will work on. So what is your criteria for the hooks working? Um, a, flat, a flat area that's wide enough to, to hold the hook. And it also has to be single walled, so the, the bolts um, don't go through two different layers of metal. Because the problem with that is as you tighten the bolts, the layers would just compress. This one has a, a layer about that thick, and then the bottom layer is actually on a different plane. So even if you drilled straight through, the bolts and the nuts, they just wouldn't sit flat because the, the top edge and the bot and the bottom what's under there are on two different planes okay. so these buckets I get a lot of questions about these buckets and I've only seen pictures of them and often when people send me pictures they're either not that good or because everything's black you just can't see the detail of the contrast so this is the first time I've actually actually felt it and got on it I would not recommend the bolt-on hooks for this bucket um, I would recommend um, the weld on stuff we offer, having somebody weld them on if you couldn't do it yourself. And I like this feature. That's really nice. I like the, I like the springs on the hose because that's really nice. It protects them, keeps them from rubbing. Of course, it could rub your paint too. That's a nice feature. I like that. It's definitely more echoey in here. The 3720 has a, has a cloth uh, roof, and I think that absorbs a lot of the echo. It's yeah, very it's echoey. It's quite echoey. Plastic, uh, very plastic. Uh, the deer has a lot of uh, more cubbies along here on both sides. Yeah, I think these are good, honest tractors for what they are. I, if, if I was, if I was going to buy a budget tractor, it would be one of these over one of the time machines, in my opinion. From what I've seen and read and all that, I think they're good, honest machines, and they, they've lasted. They've, they've had a good. They've had a good track record. They've had consistency too, you know, they don't come and go in their models and everything. Right. We have a lot of stuff that's probably simply going to be that. Polish it, Christy, and polish the parts. I could do my dip pedals in this, and that's. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll ship one to you, Ken. I, I do manufactured parts, but the parts that I would use this for, I would do about once a month. So I wouldn't use it a lot, so uh -huh. I don't know that I would do the wet. You know, you're typically, you're typically fine for a deburring or a descaling about 30 minutes. So this is Ken's bolt-on hooks, errors in training. <laughs> Pretty good, though. There you go. Wow, that's pretty cool. See, and it's still square. Look at that. What I impressed about it, y'all may not know, but this is real thin. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they won't cut square. Right. They just won't. Yeah. <laughs> and this is cutting square. I like it. That's awesome. Which one's the favorite? Me. Okay, you want a bigger? <laughs> Who's going to run the company? Who's running? Me. Oh, man. <laughs> who, who would buy the saw? Okay, she gets the bigger one. <laughs> All right, there now, you go. You can cut the shapes like this and yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Stuff. This can be done in about 
minute and a half or a minute. Wow. Okay. Good to be spending all that money, Tim. <laughs> Are you raising the price of those hooks now? I am. I have to. I have to pay for this the big vibrator that you all made me buy. Kenny, do you play with everything you find? I try to. Okay. That's why I always got in trouble in school. <laughs> <laughs>